In this video, I'll show you how to structure your mod so that we can move our code into it. Once we've made the mod, we'll have access to coroutines so we can turn what we have, which is pretty much just a single function, into a full system that detects when the player casts the raised dead spell and replaces the summons. So the first thing we're going to do is create the mods folder. Navigate to data, scripts, then mods. Create a new folder. Come up with a simple recognizable ID for your mod. Do not use spaces, numbers, or special characters. I'm going to call mine Better Raise Dead. This will be your mod's name ID, which is used internally to identify which mod is which. You do not want to change this once you set it, as it will be seen as a different mod by the mod manager if you do. You can change it, but you mustn't if you've released your mod, as it can cause complications. Okay, now we're going to take a file called modmanifest.json from any other mod, preferably from one of mine that's included with the mod manager, as it'll be the most up to date. Copy this into your mods folder and open it with your text editor or IDE. We're going to configure it. First thing is name ID. This must match your folder's name. Next is start script path. This is the path to your mod's starting script relative to your mods folder. We haven't made this yet, but I like to call it either start or main.lua. I'm going with main.lua. You can have as many scripts as you want if you load them yourself. This is just the script that is run automatically by the manager. Next is version major and minor. These indicate the current version to the manager. They can be anything really. One and zero, or a million and a billion. You'll change these when you release an update to your mod. Next is static. Static determines whether our mod is given a coroutine. If it's true, the mod is not given a coroutine. If it's false, the mod is given a coroutine. Static is good for mods that can rely solely on mod hooks, which is a system I made that lets you subscribe to triggers, which call your functions whenever certain events happen. This means it's good for simple mods that don't really need to do anything over time, like mods that overwrite existing functions or tweak things when the game loads. We're going to keep this false because we do need a coroutine, as we're going to be working with timers and such. Next is files. This is a list of files that your mod requires to be loaded into the game. The only file we're going to have right now is the main.lua file. Note that the paths to the files are relative to the scripts folder, not to your mods folder, unlike start script path. If your files are not added to this list, the game will not be able to load them. If you change these after installing your mod, you'll have to click the reinstall button again to update it. Note that for users, this will be automatically updated when they update the mod. Everything else is explanatory. The only thing I'm going to change is description because everything else is correct. Okay, the mod manifest is one of only two files that are required to make a mod. The other file is the starting script. Let's make it now. Name it whatever we named it earlier. For me, it's main.lua. Open this up and we can get to work. I'm going to assume you set static to false, otherwise you're not going to have coroutines. This script is run when the mod is first installed and later when it's reinstalled if you release an update. Now we can write anything here, like a call to display message box, which will show when our mod is installed. Our script has its own environment, so we can define whatever we want without fear of interfering with other mods. Most of the time when your mod is installed, you're not really going to want to do anything. What you're most likely going to want to do is define the mod update function. This function will be turned into a coroutine and resumed each tick by the mod manager. The vast majority of anything our mod does will be done from here. Remember to yield in your loops if they are meant to happen over time, otherwise the game will freeze. For now, I'm just going to call a function called debug.draw3dText. This function will display debug text in the 3D world. I find it extremely helpful for debugging, as it can display text without pausing the game. It takes a minimum of two and a maximum of four arguments. The first is the position. I'm going to use the hero's position. We can get the hero entity with questManager.heroEntity. We can call getPosition from the heroes meta table, which will return the cvector3 object, which the first argument takes for position. The second argument is the text to display. I'm going to write hello world, but this can be anything. The third argument is text size multiplier. One is okay, and two is quite big. I'm going with two just to make it stand out over the other stuff I have going on. The fourth argument is a table. There's actually only one thing we can put in this table as far as I know, and it's called draw in front of scene. This makes the text show on top of everything else, otherwise it will probably be obscured beneath the floor unless we raise it above the hero's head. Keep in mind this function is going to be called once each tick as the function will resume from where we yielded. 
It needs to be called each tick, otherwise it will only appear for the fraction of a second that the tick lasts. Before we do anything else, there is something else I want to cover. There are a few functions that you can define in your script that will be called by the mod manager whenever certain things happen. They are on enable, on disable, and on uninstall. These will get called when your mod is, well, you get the idea. You must use these to cleanly start and stop your mod's execution when necessary. For example, any NPCs your mod spawns must be destroyed when your mod is uninstalled. The goal of the on uninstall function is to put the game in a state where it's as if your mod was never installed. I plan on adding a function that destroys our summons when the timer runs out, so I would probably call that from the on uninstall function. Now we can test what we've made. Open Archon's toolbox and you should see the mod we made. In my case, it's better raise dead. Install and enable it. Looks good. Something I somehow forgot to mention was that every time you add a file to the directory manifest, that is when you install a mod, you need to restart the game, otherwise the game won't be able to read the files. So make sure you do that before going any further. Let's load into a save. And that looks like it works. The message box function is called when the script is first run, which is when it's installed and the 3D debug text is rendering at our feet. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. In the next one, I'll cover the actual coding of the mod, where I'll adapt the code I made earlier so that it runs when I actually want it to.